So let's, let's look at the sustainable seafood case um, and tell us what are the pieces of that and do they exist now? Are they, are they out there and deployed? Do we have, you know, IoT in the seas <laughs> that's, that's validating that the, where these things are coming from? What are, what are, what's that ecosystem, if you will, of technology and how much of those things are in place and how much is almost there and how much are, are further off? Can you give us a sense sure, of some of those sure. things? I don't think it's a hardware problem. Like, uh, I think there are devices now that are available off the shelf to be able to do the kinds of stuff I mentioned. Um, uh, there's a company called Smart Catch that makes these uh, sensor, uh, net sensors, actually. that They even have video cameras on them, so you can see the kind of fish that you caught. It's kind of crazy. Um, uh, there are uh, these sensors on buoys and at ports and things like that. that to collect that data, that's real. Um, uh, the blockchain side of that picture is really simple. It's, you know, you stand up a network of nodes, and I mean, this is what Hyperledger is built. This stuff is in production now. That ledger, that chain is not in production yet. That's still being developed. Uh, Intel is one of the leads on that. Um, uh, but it, they have gone to a number of the different fish processors uh, and, and some of the major fleet operators, all of whom are, tr what they're trying to prevent are the um, uh, renegade fishermen who actually offload their catches to legit fishermen uh, in weird waters, right? Uh, uh, who then uh, uh, come back into port and try to offload. So. I'd say probably the biggest challenge will be getting a critical mass of the participants in any marketplace uh, at, at enough layers in the chain from beginning to end to start working together um, so that they basically shame, by, by, by working well, shame the rest into joining that network. And maybe it even means if you're not, eventually, if you're not part of that network, you can't sell your fish, not only to Whole Foods, but maybe not even to any, any, supply, any uh, retailer in the United States, right? So I think, I think the, it's the, there's a bootstrapping problem with a lot of these networks. And, 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 so, and just to look at it a, a little bit more closely, so, so, it's, so it's starting with the, the, at the fisher level to the merchant level is the end point. Along the way, there are um, transportation legs that are there. There may be the port itself that needs to have some infrastructure there. Mm -hmm. and, and are you seeing that, um, or, or does it look like it would be something along the lines, it's like the good housekeeping seal, that this is like certified? How, how does that, I mean, do, do you, and, and again, this isn't obviously your piece of it, but I'm curious what you're hearing because you're talking to, I mean, in, in your role, I think you are encountering every piece of, of, uh, of the, of the mm. ecosystem of folks that are touching this stuff. Um, is it that I would have an app and I would be able to see that this fish was and verify it myself or that the merchant is providing that um, certainty at that level? This is still it, it, predominantly a business-to-business -business technology, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and it should be the case that there'll be eventually providers who act as a kind of a portal for average consumers to be able, so that, you know, in theory, Whole Foods should be able to provide you some sort of app that says, where did my fish come from, mm -hmm. that surfaced the data back to that chain. You still have to trust that Whole Foods is telling you the truth, right? right? right. Um, uh, so that, you know, but it could be at some point that that ledger becomes fully public and there's multiple ways to get to it and verify it. Um, an example of, a, of of an application I'd really like to see that looks more like that would be voter registration rolls. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people talk about, hey, should we use the blockchain to help uh, manage elections? And I think it's a terrible idea to cast votes using a blockchain because it's really hard to, to simultaneously preserve the integrity of the election uh, and the confidentiality of voters while being able to audit it. Um, but you could use a distributed ledger for the voter registration side of it so that everyone's looking at the same database uh, with regards to who's registered to vote where. And you could use it at the tail end too, which is what, what's the summary from each of the different locations, right? Uh, 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 each of the different polling places, and then rolling, rolling that up to kind of a, a state level or global kind of or national summary for how the vote went, right? Um, uh, and in the, both those cases, having the public be able to see that ledger, each individual item, right, the entire spreadsheet, so to speak, is essential to building trust and confidence in the process. Um, and so for that, I would fight for that to be very public. For something like diamonds, you know, the participants in that market have already gone through this complex political balancing act of sharing just enough information that they can audit each other on where these diamonds came from, uh, but not sharing things like the prices they paid, right, uh, and, and other metadata that could be used by investors, perhaps, to short stocks of companies that they think might not be doing well, right? So there's, I'm a very pro open data kind of guy and transparency kind of guy, but uh, for a lot of good reasons, the business communities uh, are 
only willing to share data if, they can't, if it means they can't get access to other things, right? And in the case of the diamond industry, there was a mandate from uh, the policymakers to clean up their act when it came to blood diamonds and, and that sort of thing. And that kind of pressure is essential in a lot of these chains. I think these chains are a way to finally get um, things that economists <laughs> consider externalities in markets finally reintegrated into the flow of goods and, and, and commerce. And, you know, whether that's uh, labor conditions uh, or uh, carbon uh, credit, you know, carbon load, for example, of the different products flowing through, or uh, you know, other things correlating to the sustainable development goals. Um, uh, so that's the idealist in me, and that's kind of why I'm involved in this. And you've got to have it create just enough economic value, business value for the businesses to pick it up and use it, because they won't do that um, just endogenously. They need some business problem that they can solve at the same time. Thank you.